Well, welcome back to the Whiskey Wisdom Podcast, coming to you live from Azalea Station in Wilmington, North Carolina. I am your co-host, Tyler Yaw, with... Chris Kellum. And our special guest today is... Kimberly Ryan. Thank you so much for coming on here today. And before we get started, Chris, what, what are all of us sipping on? So Tyler and I went back to a classic, old-fashioned, mm-hmm. with Old Forester. Perfect way to do it. Yeah. I went with the Orange Crush. I figured some vodka, orange juice, and Sprite would be nice and refreshing. Oh, yeah. Yes. Perfect for Sunday afternoon. Especially if you're a little hungover. Guilt. Guilty. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, cheers. 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 <laughs> Old school. Never go wrong with an old-fashioned. I haven't had one since summer started. Just because it's so hot outside, I'm like, eh. We're not selling a lot of bourbon right now either, or red wine. That I call it the porch sense. pounder season. Oh, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like cold spritz. drafts. Yeah, exactly. So talking about that, tell everyone who may not know you already, who you are, what you do, and a little bit about yourself. Yeah, my name is Kimberly Ryan. I am owner of Freya's House. We are located at the corner of Scotts Hill Loop Road in 17. It's right next to Poplar Grove, if you're familiar. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's really cool. The property's beautiful. The trees are kind of what drew me in. We're a mixed-use facility, more so with the premise of being a bar but having events that range anywhere from kids' cupcakes and goat yoga to we have the Nautical Girls Showcase <laughs> on the 17th, <laughs> which those are more of a pull-heavy and dance-based. Awesome. Makes sense. Nice. So with that being said, too, the reason why we reached out and the why we're having you on when we are is we just had Kayla and John on the podcast and kind of tell our audience who may not have listened to last week's episode a little about what they're doing in your venue. Yeah, they've been doing a yoga and sound bath. So basically you're doing a yoga class and John's running amazing music. But while that's happening, he's using the sound system to use Hertz. It's basically like a high audio that one's a little bit out of my wheelhouse, but basically it has healing vibrations. So you do this really awesome yoga class led by Kayla, followed by a sound bath. And, and the room is just kind of booming. We have beautiful high ceilings and some spray foam insulation, which creates this really great acoustic sound. And we're just getting their, their yoga flow on. And then we end with. Cocktails, a lot of THC beverages, and we also have tea and espresso. But yeah, it's been really cool. They're super talented, and yeah. it's been really nice connecting with other people that are very dedicated. They get their hours early and set up a crazy sound system, wow. and it's just been really cool. And to see so many people come together that are like minded. That's neat. Nice. So, how long have you had uh, Freya's house for at this point, and what made you want to jump in and do that? <laughs> So we've been open a little less than a year. It kind of feels more so like six months because I fully renovated the building. I have a soon-to-be one-year-old and and four-year-old, but I signed my lease and then got pregnant two months later. And (laughs) I'm uh, very talented. I can do a lot of things, but I cannot be pregnant. I get sick every day, all day. So my six to eight month renovation took about a year. Also paying rent for five months. So Mm -hmm. it was just me. Um, After my father passed, I decided to use part of my inheritance to start something that could be something that I enjoyed and could better serve my community. I lost my dad to mental health, so I wanted to create Uh, a open space for people. But long story short, we opened in September. We're only open on the weekends. And then my partner is Special Forces, and he left... uh, two months early so he was projected to leave in January we opened again in a September I had a baby in August and then he left actually on his birthday (laughs) in November so none of I didn't really have a business model but that was not a part of it right so (laughs) we're here now let's say it seems like it all kind of worked its way out and everything though I see a lot of people that are going over there and kind of posting about it and everything so it seems like it's starting to take off are you kind of happy with where (laughs) it's at now most definitely John's been home for about two months since this deployment started and my youngest is able to do more with a babysitter so Mm -hmm. before you used to see me bartending and a baby carrier and nursing while bartending so it's been really cool to take some time away I never imagined myself being a bartender with a baby like there's Mm -hmm. a baby in a bar (laughs) 
<laughs> but uh, that's kind of the thing too, is, is welcoming other families. Being that we serve alcohol, that's not the baseline of it. It's more of like a watering hole. So if you want to yeah, come yeah. drink, get a tea, bring your dog, your kid, you don't have to drink. We have food trucks throughout the week. So that's a big add on for myself. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I don't think I would have made it through that deployment without someone cooking for me. But uh, yeah, it's been, it's been really cool and the girls are doing great. So I don't and you've kind of been like a staple, like in the service industry and everything. I've seen you at a yeah. bunch of places and you've told <laughs> us about a few other places that you've been at before. What was kind of the, I guess, leading factor to like, you know what? I think I'm ready to take a step out on my own. I think I, I was reading some of the questions you had sent over prior and being able to open up my own business kind of started when I joined the junior league and I was seeing all these incredible women doing all these really hard tasks while also working full time and right. working for themselves. And I just was like a little lost. I actually applied to be a liquor rep having worked in the industry forever and I didn't receive the job. And I was like, I didn't even really want that job. Like, what am I going to do? Right. And my dad had passed, so I hadn't worked in a while. And at that time, I had my first tile. And I'd always pass this beautiful building, and no one did anything with it. So I was like, you know what? If, if other people can do it, then why don't I try? And I, it is nice. To, and to be honest, like, if having the, the fallback that I do have the finances for that was a lot easier. Like, right. I couldn't imagine having those loan payments coming in. I did everything cash forward and... There's certain things that I was too cheap on <laughs> that I'll have to fix, <laughs> but I wanted to do it all without the stressor on my family and right. just really plan things and do it inter incrementally. Yeah. I think we've seen probably 20 new bars open and mm -hmm. probably 10 to 15 close all yeah. at the same time. Yeah. So, And it's, I like that you showcase like, hey, you wanted to do this, but you didn't jump out and like, Say, hey, let's open a bar, and then maybe it'll shutter. Your goal is to have a spot for people for years to come, hopefully. Certainly. I have a five-year lease with two unilateral five-year extensions, so mm. essentially I can be there for 15 years. I really love Poplar Grove area and just the history behind it, so hopefully there's room to grow with that. Um, but having to having no tenant improvement and doing it all that you have mm -hmm. to at least make the return back but yes. that is kind of why I started that I've always been involved in charity work since I was younger and that maintained through the sorority that I was in we are really big with Make-A-Wish Foundation mm. and after some kind of dark times in my life I've turned to charity to kind of help me through that whether it's the pat on the back comes to myself and helping others but they always struggle finding a venue for their space and that's something that's really expensive so mm. I figure I could combine my talents of bartending and love for that with providing a free space for them. I, I really believe in being symbiotic, and that's helped my business model. I, for the most part, don't charge for the space, and I've worked with a bunch of entrepreneurs that I don't think have the support, or maybe like they don't, they're not ready to step out on their own. Right, but I'm yeah. like, I will market it for you. Let's make an event, bring it in, and they make money, I make money. So yeah. I can help out the community and pay my bills. So nice. <laughs> that's perfect. Yeah, I I know exactly where Freya's house is because I'm one of those people that my wife hates it. Every time I'm driving down the road, I'm like, oh, that'd be a really great bar. That'd be a good this. <laughs> yeah. She's like, we don't have the money for that yet. But knowing real estate right. is like half the battle. Like yes. you can't just pick a spot. Like what's around it? What is growing? We have a lot of new bars in my area that are family friendly and it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So hopefully like I don't view it as competition. I think we all view, we all create something different, but if we can make it a Mecca in that area, there's no reason to go other places. So right. do a bar crawl where we go to eight of the same bars and yep. like everyone should be different. And if you're proud and happy with what you do, those people will come to you. So yeah. Yeah. And that's what I, I love is that like that, that side of town, like you mentioned, doesn't really have anything because I mean, I'm, I've grown up here my whole life and there was, we had, you had a bar in Ogden and Ogden then you, tap room. Yeah. <laughs> and then you, you went up and there was like, okay, well you Beach have house. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that's it. I'm old too. <laughs> I, uh, like. I forget all the names because they've changed and I'm like, what is the name of this one now? Seven mile. Yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's hard for those families who are like, well, I want to go have a drink and see my friends, but yeah. I don't want to drive all the way into town Certainly. and get stuck with traffic and all this other mess. So I think helping like be that anchor, as I would say, like your location is a good spot for families and friends and people to just kind of like, hey, we can start here and work our way home or start here and work away into town. 
I'm trying to market it now as the traffic spot because that traffic oh, yeah. is egregious. Five oh. to seven, get a snack, get, take them a bottle of wine. Like, babe, I didn't want to stop at the bar, but I had to. I brought <laughs> you a six pack. So we have a lot of cool stuff that's going out. And being that I'm trying to be not a bar, more of a communal center, we have like kids toys. And I mean, like, your worn outs in the sun Fisher Price toy. So oh, yeah. if someone breaks it, it's fine. Like kids come and the first time they're there, they're a little feral, but it's age appropriate and yeah. I embrace it. By the third time they come, it's bad, but they're kind of like dogs. You have to socialize <laughs> right, them. Exactly. So by time three, they're, they're doing great. They're, they're playing together and some of them actually really look forward to it. My four-year-old's there often and she has friends that she's made up and down the loop. Oh, that's cool. They now go to camp together and it's been really cool to provide that. Like I kind of say, if, if you see something there you need, need like a kid's toy, take it. <laughs> it's also yeah. one less thing I have to clean up. <laughs> but yeah. But I like that. Like most places, like in general, in a bar, you don't want people taking your stuff because sure. <laughs> that's expensive. But in your space, you're making it a community spot. Mm -hmm. So like, hey, if you need this, take it. But I'm also assuming you'll bring something and replace. They do feel really good about future. that. A lot of moms are like, can I bring that? And they're like, <laughs> it's out, out of my space <laughs> and I'm doing good. So it, it is cool. Yeah. So I guess first question is, what, where did the name Freya's house come from? <laughs> Freya is the Norse god of war and love. And my part, we wanted to... Okay, we, I wanted to name our first set. He did not. But so the, the name kind of stuck around for me, and he's special forces and has lost some buddies, two of which when I was pregnant with McKenna, who I wanted to be Freya. Mm -hmm. And I was originally in school for sexual behavioral health. It's a big passion of mine, and I used to be like a fine nude and bathing suit model. So mm -hmm. Freya's one of her sayings used to be like, if you can't lay them, slay them. <laughs> but, but she also helped women with infertility. She had this cloak that she'd wrap around them, help them. She was big in apothecary, and I'm a big hippie, the, the cleaner ingredient, yeah. cr crunchy light. But So I just figured like, She's a goddess of war and love. Also, Nordic stuff is, like, trendy right now for marketing. Right. Like, I'm a big nerd. I love that. So I stuck with Freya's. And the house aspect was uh, it's German. It's H-A-U-S. Mm -hmm. I'm German. My last name is Rhine. And after my dad passed, I went on a big Euro trip, part of which was to Munich. And I just saw all these, like, really cool communal spaces. Like, mm -hmm. if you go there... It's not a table for you and I. It's a table for everybody. Right. <laughs> and so I wanted to create that same aspect. So when you come there, like, you're welcome to my house. You, yeah. you are welcome. It's a home. It's supposed to feel cozy. We have friends' seating areas, and then we have, like, a kid's table. Mm. Juice boxes, uh, Encrustables. Yeah. <laughs> and then we have chocolate mushrooms. So <laughs> They're legal, by the way. Right. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So... I don't know a lot. I will admit that sometimes. But you mentioned you guys have like CBD drinks and yeah. So like I've seen that around town. You tell me a little bit more about that because all Most I know definitely. is alcohol. Yeah. So I honestly myself was not super heady on it. I picked it up just for a product. A few people had asked for it. I'm a, a flavor girl myself, but I was like, wow, these seem silly. You know, like it's a drink. Like, what do you mean? And I actually had a, a cold during a fall festival for my daughter. So I was Ooh. like. I'm just going to drink these instead of like the right. McUltras or White Claws that everyone was drinking. And it actually, it was kind of a euphoric feeling. So there's a breakdown now of CBD, THC, A, and then there's like Delta 8, Delta 9. Right. I like to tell people THC is more for the mind. Like I got a spicy brain. <laughs> I need yeah. it to chill. Whereas CBD is more for the body and inflammation, both of which okay. are very helpful. So some beverages are that. D8 is a little bit more uh, artificial to me mm -hmm. and d9 is a little bit cleaner i still don't know like one is lit on fire one mm -hmm. is prematurely they're just finding caveats to be able to provide <laughs> hemp to us but we have a broad range i'm actually working with mars to create my own I'm seltzer i'm really passionate oh, wow. about the cannabis industry i think i, I can't take adderall i'm nursing i have ADHD, <laughs> right. so flower has been something that has helped me immensely throughout my life and i think people should have access to it you can have a few of those drinks and one cocktail and be fine mm. and you're not going to need to take dandelion root and kill your liver. I've been in the service industry for forever and I've seen and lost a lot of people from like liver issues mm -hmm. and just poor decisions. Alcohol it doesn't always bring out the best in me or I think many but it is fun if you find that sweet spot. So right. if you can drink some and still feel social, some people just want to have that drink in their hand. It's actually one of my best to-go sellers and because I'm so 
annoyingly obnoxious. Like, we'll come with old people, and I'm like, hey, our beers are there, the weed's there. What? <laughs> but if you don't make it seem as taboo, it can yeah. become such. Right. And that's what we're really uh, trying to do. We probably have 15 to 20 different flavor options, oh, wow. and they range from 2.5 milligrams to 30. Mm. Um, if you are worried about THC, CBD actually counteracts it. So some of them have both in them. So it's just a euphoric feeling, and your body's not as sore. So... We do have those, and we have pre-rolls and gummies, and THCA is not to, not for human consumption, just to buy. <laughs> right. <laughs> potpourri, I, was I guess. Say, yeah, just to hang out with. <laughs> we have a lot of potpourri here. Yeah, I love that. Right. Um, I like that. It's got to be, it, it's shocking to me that hemp, I actually wanted to do some of my insulation with hemp. It's oh, yeah. a brilliant resource. Oh, yeah. uh, it's cost effective. Mm-hmm. It maintains mold. We get a lot of water here, but I was poor. So yeah. That's I what it. I was thinking. I'm like. <laughs> I've seen like hemp products are actually really good when it comes to like building supplies and like natural things out there, but it is so much more expensive because they want it to be. Right. Yeah. Um, they actually like alcohol. Weird fun fact: we can the drinking age can be eighteen, but you will not receive federal funding. And then even like with tobacco, like they're the ones fighting that. North Carolina mm-hmm. used to be a huge huge hemp grower, and even still, it's yeah. so good for the soil. Right. So if they make it expensive and tax it, then you won't use it as much until they figure out how to monetize it. Then they're not going to, yeah. I mean, even the Sounds gambling right. that they've started now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. I can't they, game they play to, or whatever. They had to make sure they could make money off of it. Mm-hmm. That's do why we still have an ABC. I don't have Kino, but I do have other games of the sort. There's only a ten dollar payouts, and the rest is a uh, bar tab. Okay. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, people like it. They come in and do it, and it brings people into the bar. So the lights are kind of annoying, but it's a, it's a unique hobby. It, I personally don't gamble. Yeah. Uh, I go to used to go to Vegas a lot, and it just seems stressful to me. Like I'll pay for a <laughs> butler, but I'm not gonna right, yeah. risk twenty bucks. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, people like it. And one of my strengths and weaknesses is I love to find a way to monetize anything. Mm-hmm. Bills are expensive. That's why we do offer coffee as well as alcohol. And then we do events at night and events during the day. Rent is expensive. And yes. I mean, insurance is $1,400 for alcohol amongst workers comp. But I think that we're doing a good job finding that sweet spot of keeping it fun and clean, but also you can still party a little bit. (laughs) You mentioned earlier, what are your hours? Like, are you... During the week, we're open technically 5 to 10. If we're busy, we'll be open till midnight. On some Thursdays, I'm there till 2. On the weekends, Friday, we open a little bit earlier at 3. On Saturday, noon. And on Sunday, noon as well. Uh, We do plan to move more to be full day with the coffee program, but my, my daughter doesn't go back to school until September. So one of the questions y'all had sent me was, what do I view success? And for me, that's not so much as monetary. It is the ability to be able to have freedom. I've never had a real job per se with s- distinct hours that I couldn't change. And being able to be there for my family and my children has been a luxury that I probably couldn't have purchased without this. So Right. Well, thank you for not being at work and coming here and chatting with us. I'm yeah, going in late. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> that, makes that makes more sense. Kaylee's there right now. Thank you. Thank Good you, stuff. Kaylee. <laughs> so what type of events do you do regularly that some of our listeners can come out and enjoy? We have some pasta classes with oh. What the Fork. <laughs> oh, yeah. She is super talented. I, they might have That's done one here. one here. Yeah. 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 So actually was the first person to, this is the kind of thing, I, I mean, reaching out to entrepreneurs, I was like, look, you're killing it. Why don't we do a class at Freya's? Uh, yeah. She's like, I've never done that. Well, can we be my test dummy? Like, what do you need from me? And I was yeah. like, throw a drink ticket in there and you can keep all your proceeds. So there was no real overhead for her. And if it failed, it failed. And if it crushed it, it would and it it has and now she's able to do that multiple times a month doing something she loves and hopefully i get some free pasta soon too right (laughs) (laughs) it's always a benefit like i don't need the drink ticket just give me pasta right so (laughs) what's your favorite kind of pasta I helped open Tarantelli's, and that's where they first Ooh. introduced me to the one that starts with a B. I'm blanking. Oh, Pappardelle, pardon. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh. But a, a homemade pasta, any of them sound great, but I do enjoy a Pappardelle ever since I was introduced to it. Mm. You can order half portions at Tarantelli's if there's no meat in it. That's a great way to try some of their pastas. Oh, I did not know that. My <laughs> wife is sitting in the audience here, and that's one of her favorite places to go. Yeah, so she's please like, go. <laughs> I've still never been. It's worth um, it. 
Well, the one time I tried to go, I didn't realize that she had to make a reservation. And they were like, yeah, no, we're booked. <laughs> I was like, hmm. Oh, I'll, I'll try again in six months. When I, I haven't remember. been to Cousins yet. And I've lived here for forever. But I hear it's awesome. It's like family style. Yeah. And it sounds really cool. So oh. maybe I mean, we'll all go. We should. Yeah. <laughs> I got a pretty big family. And Tyler's has enough kids for all of us. It's true. <laughs> How many kids so do we you have? We always have two. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's the running joke. Everyone's They're like, two and four, but it feels like there's many more. So Seriously. <laughs> yes. I got a vasectomy for my birthday. There you go. <laughs> He's like, what See? do you want? <laughs> I was like, let me I was tell like, you. So you know how my pregnancies aren't good? Like, we're not doing this anymore. <laughs> yep. <laughs> See, that's a whole nother topic we'll talk about later. <laughs> so, random thought question do you meet your husband at the bar i'm a tinderella high five <laughs> wait was it actually tinder or was it prior so Different. someone actually tried to introduce us and unfortunately i had experienced a terrible in the news you can google it's not fun domestic violence incident mm -hmm. and they were in special forces and i'd never dated anyone in special forces like poor house was the first bar i worked at and right I have a similar type, you know, like I like Sierra Miss, Sprite, Starry, <laughs> like, <laughs> get it. Yeah. And so after that happened, I was like, I'll never date anyone in the military, like first and last. It wasn't a military thing, but that was just, I had to be mad about something. Yeah. And so someone tried to introduce us and I was like, yeah, right, never again. <laughs> and then we actually meet on Tinder and we go to hang out and it, it kind of clicks. He says something and I'm like, what? Oh, wait. <laughs> Actually, like, we don't really talk about it often, but the military did find out it was, a, like, a three-year-long lawsuit and stuff, and they tried to make it so we couldn't talk, and this was right after my dad had passed, um, but they kind of <laughs> made him ghost me during that time, like, Ooh. really would have affected his career, so it was like, I lost my dad, I got beat up prior, and then this man, oh, like, wow. I thought he liked me more than I liked him at first, like, yeah. wait a minute. <laughs> and um, you're like, oh, never mind. Yeah, for real. It's like, I can't read anything. And so we actually reconnected. I, I was leaving a, a music video shoot downtown, and he was downtown, and we just kept running into each other and were able to rekindle and kind of fight their system of it. And then, like, a year later, I got pregnant, and they're like, ha-ha, you're stuck with me. <laughs> right. <laughs> not, not him, but the military. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah now we have a house, two kids, a business. It's been about five or six years. So he's a very quiet and kind guy, mm -hmm. probably part of the job I probably don't say too much about him because they kind of enjoy that they need that right. little anonymity for their career but nice. he's great and keeps us safe and super funny so does he work at the bar now no he helps out from time to time he's okay. still in special forces okay. he's leaving his team to become a sniper instructor for marsoc so oh, he'll wow. be home now for two years they nice. usually deploy every year and a half for about six or seven months yep. so that'll be nice to have him Sounds home nicer yeah. yeah, I mean, they're still <laughs> gone a lot. But right. I'm like, can you pick her up from school? He's like, no, I get home at midnight. Like, okay, bye. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. See, that <clears throat> that was the thing, like, special forces, or like military in general, and retail are both, well, same with the bar. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, it's hard to have a family, mm -hmm. and I applaud you for pulling that off. For at sure. least if you work in a bar, you're like, okay, well... Technically, if I get home at 3.45, I can sleep for two hours and then get yeah. the kid to school. But then I'm not there at night. If but you're getting off at that time, yeah, too. Like, right. yesterday I got off at 5. Haha, <laughs> I got off at 8. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really a hands-on owner. I would never – I had a basketball coach in middle school, and he said I would never ask of you guys to do something I would not. Granted, yeah. if you're in trouble, like, you're running your sprints. Right. But every warm-up, he ran with us, and I try to um, embody that at my business as well. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to leave during a pop. Um, I – I only bartend like two or three nights a week if I'm not helping out or filling in, but I'd like to step away more and focus. I am the plumber, the electrician. I do every social media post. Yep. The nice. phone number is my phone number. <laughs> 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 I know about HVAC now. See, you're, to me, that's like what good leadership is. It's like, hey, you're here, you're in the, in the shit, just working through it, but you can step back and be like, okay, well, how do we fix this so next time we're not going to have this issue or how do how can we make this better 
And like, I think that's great that you were hands on. Certainly. I think a lot of that I have to attribute sadly to, I was hyper independent. I really just have had a lots of highs and lows in my life. And it kind of taught me to be independent as a negative. And it wasn't until being so sick during my pregnancy is like I slept in the bathtub. Like I mm-hmm. got IVs twice a week at the cancer infusion center. And then after that, it killed my gallbladder. So I had that emergently oh, wow. removed. So I didn't, I had had to lean on people. I've had some awesome friends and, and mentors that really stepped up without having to ask, which taught me to be comfortable. And now I know that it is a strength to right. have emotions and be true because it's only going get, to get harder. So that, that has helped with my leadership is the unfortunate of having to be forced into it. Huh. I'm going to steal Chris's random question real quick. So <laughs> having the bar and being in the service industry, it's kind of a twofold question is one, what is your favorite cocktail? And two, what is your favorite cocktail to make if it's different? Okay. My favorite cocktail to make is anything with a really beautiful ice cube that I put something Mm -hmm. fun in. I really love martinis. I think you can Mm. showcase anything. And I know that's an obscure answer because it's not like a flavor profile, but I've kind of built my bartending career around if you come in the bar, I'm like, do you like vodka, gin, rum, or tequila? Like, All right, sweet, spicy, citrus, and savory, and kind of creating that off the cuff and then making it beautiful is kind of what I – I'm not a classic cocktail girl. Like, I don't use chartreuse. I don't know – Mana is incredible. I've worked with so mm-hmm. many talented bartenders, and I can learn that. It's just not my strong suit. But for me, it would just be a pretty cocktail. I know that's, right. like, cliche, but, like, I, I can make a beautiful old-fashioned, and I can add something different to it. But it's, for me, creating the cocktail that makes you happy and kind of right. maybe keeps you on your toes. Adding in a, like, last, yesterday I made a tahini brown sugar rimmed uh, mango margarita. Oh, that mm. sounds she was good. like, what? <laughs> That's neat. Um, the guy that actually taught me how to bartend was Anthony Gregarious. He is no mm-hmm. longer with us, unfortunately, but he was awesome and he was super dry, but he was brilliant. He taught me something every single day. Like I would come in, he was like, all right, we're learning these six cocktails or mm-hmm. six drinks. Like Ooh. he had DVDs. <laughs> he was really, wow. <laughs> I didn't watch this, but uh, he really taught me to just learn it, know how to smell my cocktail. You'll see me smell in a shaker all the time. Right. Like I might not be able to know how much I put in there, but I can know what it needs. If it is some citrus or it needs a little bit more sweetness or mm-hmm. um, if it's too spicy, kind of how to mellow that. I don't, really work with egg whites this freak me out so you don't you're not a gin fizz person no i was gonna say i know it's, like it tastes delicious but as soon as i like smell it, it's like by my nose i'm like, like what is that like even some sauvignon blancs i'm like well right. smells like bo <laughs> it's new zealand it must be new zealand yeah. <laughs> my favorite to drink is shots of rumplements Whoa, I don't really? know. I'm a trash panda. I'm a <laughs> raccoon. I was going to say, I'm like, that <laughs> guarantees that you have worked in a bar. Yeah. I'm not proud of it, but if I'm in a pinch or I'm trying to get there, it's like tequila shots and rumplements. I mm. really believe in the fact that I like drinks and flavors, but if I'm out drinking, like, I want to get a buzz. Yeah. And with modeling, I used to try to be cost effective in my calories. So I was like, True. I got an hour and a half. <laughs> Y'all are here. I got to catch up. Catch Let's up. go. Fast. Oh. You pick rumplements over Malort? Uh, see, I've never <laughs> even tried Malort. I don't fuck with what? it. I don't mess with it. I'm not, you, why not. You I can't think, say it if you've never tried because it. Because sometimes I'm, I, I, you're right, you're right. Just <laughs> reading the fr- flavor profile and like the cockroach things and all of that. Right. I'm just like, you know, like I, I do like Fernet. I, like, okay. I'm not a Ferrari girl per se, but like I like Fernet. Right. Ferrari is Fernet and why am I playing on an Aperol? Okay. <laughs> I, there's a guy at the bar who gets that all the time. And I'm like, and it's good for you. So it's going to be all these herbs. There's not a lot yeah. of sugar. So it's right. a smart way to drink. Like, but I'm just going to rip Rumplemans. <laughs> <laughs> they I just came out with Chili Willy, which is Wilmington Distillery's take on Rumplemans, which is evidently less sugar. It's not a syrupy, okay. which I have tried. And it is nice. Do you have that at the bar? We do have it from time to time. Okay. Um, it is kind of hard to break in. I wanted like, a bar that I made all the drinks, yeah. and then they're like, psych, right. your business model's trash. You're going to accommodate. <laughs> so people are still stuck on the rumple when they drink it, yeah. but I'm good at, like, sneaking that in, and, like, right. if I'm passionate about something, I'll pick it up. I used to, like, do the influencing and the protein mm-hmm. sponsors and bathing suits, but if I don't like it, I can't sell it, and it's a job. But Very if I really true. believe in it, I'm like, yo, get that, and it's local? Like, how exactly. cool? Exactly. 
but yeah, people like are it, coming around. Yeah, I was going to say, especially in this town, I feel like it'd be easier to be like, hey, this is the same exact thing, except it's made five miles down the road. I think it's cheaper, too, and you can buy it from them on Sundays. They uh, make yeah. a... Um, yeah, because you can go in person and pick it up. <laughs> they make a chili willy mojito, and I shouldn't make a face because I've never had it, but it scares okay. me. <laughs> See, that's, that's I've hit a point because of this podcast. Like, first off, I didn't drink whiskey really before i started the podcast oh, wow. and it was it was a running joke because i was like oh you like whiskey and i'm like yeah <laughs> sure. he's like yeah i want to be on a podcast jack daniels <laughs> yeah. got it oh. i was like i don't, I don't know anything <laughs> Reading it, i've just been like all right let's just try things even if you don't love it we'll still try it for sure and like it's funny because i go to the bar all the time and they're like oh wait you don't like aperol and i'm like mm, not really well it's in this drink and i'm like i'll give it another try a touch of it is not always right. the... Well, I have, like, there's something with Aperol that actually, like, numbs my tongue. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm allergic. Weird allergens, or it's, yeah. Right. I was like, but let's go with it. Like, I tried to <laughs> I drink last like night. Because <laughs> I looked at the bartender, I'm like, hey, you got this really cute shirt on. It's Chapel Roan. Let's uh, give me a drink that's inspired by her. Because, okay. like, she's a whole... Like, if you know anything about, like, music and personalities, she's pretty much like the Chaperone is the Lady Gaga of our generation. And Lady Gaga was the Madonna of, like, our parents. I that have makes no sense. clue what you're talking about. But, what a but if, you think, if you think about <laughs> comparisons, like, your parents are like, oh, Madonna, super crazy, weird. Right. But then Gaga came out for our age, and right. you're like, Gaga was weird. And Roan is the same thing I for, like, no the younger. I person is. I'm going to have to search We're at some point. We're going to that. Yeah. Oh, you, gonna learn. you will. <laughs> you should listen to... I haven't spent much time on TikTok as I used to. I'm no, no. falling out of the Gen Z Sign era. <laughs> the answer, so me and my wife are on different sides of TikTok. Uh -huh. So, like, all of her stuff is chaperone, and all my stuff is, like, despite how I act, it's still, like, random black talk. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> it's dances, music, like, super silly stuff. But I would say you should definitely listen to... Red wine, supernova. Okay. Uh, or if you want, like, that super, like, hoppy, hot to go. You sh it's just, just check it out. I'm a combo of out. all of those kind of music. So I'm a big music head. I used to work at Ziggy's, which is the mm -hmm. oh, music yeah, yeah. venue here. And my mentor is Aaron Flaherty, who is oh, yeah. one of the biggest bookers. Ever. Not biggest, but to me, <laughs> he's an incredible booker. He's at the music box in Outer Banks, but still does stuff. But my four-year-old's been to, like, 30 concerts. I made sure to do 24 by 24 months. Uh, I don't have all the pictures of all, of like, course, yeah. everybody sitting of there course. with, like, the <laughs> one. I was like, I'll just do 24 concerts. That yes. would be super cool. <laughs> See, That's pretty neat. I like bounce. Like I don't really go to concerts unless it's like I need to. I had a, a phase of my life where I'm like, oh, we're going. And then I looked at my bank account and I'm like, okay, well, it's ramen noodles for the next like six weeks. Yeah. <laughs> um, but like recently, like we did a Michael Franti because like my wife and her friends go every year. They gave me the tush, baby. I'm the girl in that video. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> He's such an interesting guy. Like, mm -hmm. his story, like, I didn't realize, like, his background in general. And I I'm love like, that he opens with it, too. I was like, okay, like, this is another, like, it's a vibe going to him. But this year we're going to, like, we're seeing Usher in concert. Ooh, where? Um, Charlotte? In Charlotte, yeah. yeah. Well, he, we saw him at, like, right before they announced that he was going to the Super Bowl. I'm like, I wonder if he's doing a concert. I was like, oh, and I bought tickets. <laughs> and then my friend went to buy tickets during the Super Bowl, and they had like. Yeah, right. I'm sure. Actually, <laughs> I bought tickets during Super Bowl. And during halftime show, they spiked like two, $300. And I'm like, mm, sucks to suck. I didn't pay that much. Um, and we're also seeing Tori Kelly. So I'm trying to like mm. expand my horizons. Right in your music horizons. Yes. I just wish more more music that I listened to was coming to Wilmington. We don't really have that push for it, and which sucks, like, it's more like the indie scene. Like, I'm a big yeah. reggae girl, yeah. and Colin, that is in Signal Fires, my old roommate, and uh, no a really good friend of the movement. My other old roommate, randomly, is Jared Sale, so they've introduced me Hello, to so Jared. much random music yeah. that those boys fight for it. So until we get mm -hmm. another promoter or musician that's fighting for it, like, Bo is super, super talented. He runs Penguin and like all that music that he likes, he's super eclectic, but it's like still more his wheelhouse because he likes right. it. Yes. He wants to see it too. When he said like the ramen noodle thing, 
if I didn't have as many connections as I did, I probably wouldn't have seen three fourths of it. Like <laughs> my daughter thinks she can go backstage all the time. She's like, no, I want to go back to the lake part and like to hang out with the drummer. And I'm like, <laughs> it's actually not normal, but uh, I would love that for you. So that's funny. I love that. So <laughs> what kind of music? So you said reggae? Yeah, I'm a big reggae girl. Who you got? Like uh, We just saw Dirty Heads in Iration this past mm -hmm. weekend. That was great. I was always really big into Collie Buds when I was younger. Also, I had no idea he was a white guy. Like, that blew right. my mind. <laughs> and then I met him. I Actually, we were in the Outer Banks, and I had my youngest, or my oldest, she was, I think, two. And I'm taking a picture. They have in the VIP area. all these crazy lights. It's just beautiful. So I asked this guy to take a picture for me. And I didn't realize at the time that was Collie Bud's manager. So mm. all of a sudden, Collie Bud's gets next to me to take this picture. And like, I'm like, oh, damn, I'm pretty girl. Like, I was like, I guess this guy <laughs> just wants right. to take a picture of me. So I'm like, whatever. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I look over and I'm like, wait. I'm like, oh my God. I was like, I love you. <laughs> and, I, and I'm not a fangirl. And I was like, so just beside myself. But the manager was like, oh, yeah, she wants a picture with Collie Bud's. But right. yeah, you would have never, his outfits, everything. But he's great. Yeah, Dirty Heads has been like up there for me as of late. Medusa nice. is my is my favorite, and mm -hmm. they um, closed with that this last show. Oh, no, um, no. I with my pregnancy at the youngest, I couldn't go to really any shows, and so at the very end, I was like, Dirty Heads was in Raleigh, and I just had been a rough nine months. I was like, we're going. <laughs> yeah. I'm like. Ah. So we go, and there's this picture of us, and I'm super pregnant. John has a shirt with, like, mushroom butts on it, and we have McKenna. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, we made it. I think we made it through, like, four songs. And I was like, okay, I saw Medusa. We can go I'm home good. Now. I can go. <laughs> oh. Music saved me a little bit after my dad passed and John being deployed because being a mom, no one's like, oh, you're bringing your kid out to the bar. That's terrible. But if you – bring your kid to a show, like, then you're cool. Right. <laughs> They're yeah. like, hell yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what? People, like, feel like when they see you out with your children and it's a little bit, like, later or you're having even a beer. Like, I've been on an mm -hmm. airplane before. My sister is a flight attendant and I'm having a glass of wine. And the lady's like, I don't know about that. <laughs> I was just like, what? Like, I'm traveling cross country to Croatia with my like one and a half year old right. and I'm getting flack instead of I go to a concert, have a beer in my hand and they're like, you're so cool. <laughs> so exactly. that room. So Tyler and I used to work together. I will always remember this lady. She was nine months pregnant, like waddled in with her mom and was like, Hey, I got to buy a push present. And was looking at, like, Rolexes. And I'm like, yes. I mean, that's a great push present. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to argue with this. Uh, and we're like, hey, do you do you want some water, some soda? She's like, no, give me a wine. I'm like, <laughs> she's like, no, no, I'm like nine months plus two weeks. Like, yeah, I'm, I get I'm, it out. I'm getting this cut out in two <laughs> days. Like, just give it to me. And I just remember, like, helping him out. And I'm like, this seems so weird. Yeah. So but are we legally allowed to give this to like I mean, no Well, no one we knows can. about like pregnancy. Right. Like even when you're pregnant, they're like, don't look at the sun. You're like, you might die. You're pregnant. <laughs> yeah. You're like, but really? actually like technically you're allowed to have, if you will, one glass of wine a month per se. And right. I was so sick. I wanted nothing to do with wine, but sometimes it'll help you with labor or to stall labor. Oh. Like, so it's actually can be helpful for that. See, I've also heard of dark beer. No. <laughs> My brain just went. <laughs> and not getting drunk the whole time while you're pregnant, but like having a glass, just like. Oh, uh, yeah. Like relaxation. Yeah. Yeah. Stress and cortisol levels can significantly affect things. I don't think that alcohol per se is like an aid for that. But if like people that like awful but like smoked a bunch of cigarettes if they become pregnant they're not like go cold turkey that actually send their body right. into more shock. They yes. kind of have to like wean themselves off it and. So gay. People used to drink all the time back in the day. Say, like, don't do it now. But like, you're all right. A lot of people okay. don't even know they're pregnant until like super late. Yeah. Right. I knew immediately because I threw up. I was like, uh, that's, that's what, what I did it. It was <laughs> parents and moms used to smoke mm -hmm. all the time, and I Doctors will always used to remember tell you. this. Yeah. Well, I remember there's a scene it's on the hairspray. Gloves. It's the have you ever seen the dish gloves? Uh -uh, they no. would smoke with their gloves, so they take it off and they wouldn't smell cigarettes. And they came inside. They had their smoking coat and the Cigar dishwasher right. glove. That's right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is interesting. No, in hairspray, I remember like the one that came out in the 2000s. So she was walking down the street singing, and like there were these ladies sitting in a bar smoking, and they rolled around and they were like. <laughs> 
full on <laughs> pregnant. Yeah. And I was like, yep, oh. this is the 60s. A hundred percent. Even car seats and stuff. Like, I don't believe in yeah. survivor fallacy, which is like the, well, I used, we did that for my kid and they survived. Like, we want to do better for our children. Yes, but right. everyone's going to judge you across the board. Obviously, don't smoke cigarettes and get drunk when you're pregnant. But being pregnant sucked for me. And there's no real, like, aid medically and stuff. So I've learned a lot about what medicines can be helpful and the right. natural alternatives. But... And we're like, oh, pregnancy is great. Like, I'm not the one to talk to. Like, it's great for other people, but, like, nah. I'm not the one. <laughs> well, and it's nice, too, because, like, having the podcast, yes, one, I learned how to drink and enjoy new flavors and try everything. But we have also met a bunch of, like, natural medicine people and, like, naturopaths yeah. and good. people That's that awesome. I Because, one, I'm not pushing a kid out. So I don't <laughs> know good or bad. But, like, meeting these people have made me think, like, like oh, well you probably should go see like a holistic doctor. Like if you're having issues Honestly. or check out somebody that's not just a basic physician who's going to be like, Oh yeah, just pop like six aspirin. They're just so staunch. And that's what makes it so hard. I feel like I would have had more success with my first had I been able to have Eastern and Western medicine collide. Mm -hmm. Instead I was like lying to my Eastern medicine doctor. Cause uh, I also had yeah. a midwife and they're like, so basically I was listening to what they were both saying and being like, all right, that sounds crazy. This one sounds great. Also, that seems unsafe too. But if they were to work together, they could even, I mean, two heads are better than one regardless, right. but they, sometimes you do need an antibiotic. Like other times you can use like gentium violet. Like, right. well, I don't know what that is. I didn't until I had to use no, it I recently <laughs> for my daughter. It's antiviral, anti-flush. Yeah. You can get it at Lovey's, which that place is awesome. But naturopaths are great. Our insurance is garbage, so besides getting a wellness check, like I think people need to look into gut health more so, but right. that's why we try to at the bar use a lot of like natural ingredients and stuff. Like obviously we have some like ridiculous things like that just, to, I can't break people <laughs> off the rumple mints, <laughs> yes. but instead of these syrups, I, I made a pumpkin pie syrup this weekend for oh, an espresso neat. martini and it's just a pumpkin pie puree, pumpkin pie spice, brown sugar or honey and some hot water. Yeah. And yeah. it's, it, it's not shelf stable. So we have to use it or, or toss it, but it's so, so much cleaner. And I think it tastes better too. Right. Oh, it's so delicious. That was my like crutch all last <laughs> fall. So like, Everyone knows my favorite bar. If you don't know, check all the things I tag. And they did a pumpkin pie yeah. espresso martini. And then they did, like, th they made their own foam and, like, put it on the top. Yes. And you're like, do I need That's this? That's a brilliant idea, though. No, Even, like, a creme brulee topper. Like, oh, sweet. I'm not allowed to have a torch. <laughs> <laughs> the for, uh, poor house, I'll never forget. I'm, like, 21. I maybe bartend, like, a week. These guys are like, let's do Flame and Dr. Peppers. Like, they don't even make 151 anymore. No, if they do make it, they don't right. sell it. We, we can't buy Not it. Not in North Carolina. Yeah. And so I'm lighting it on fire, and then this guy knocks it over, and the whole bar's on fire. Oh, no. And I'm like, so I'm, I'm a little pyro, so I don't, I don't keep a torch in the bar. I just think things that could be get out of safe, hand. safe enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we already kind of talked about Chris's typical question of what success looks like for you. Mm -hmm. So, my, one of my final questions is, if you could tell your younger self one thing, what would it be? Thick thighs save lives. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, being an athlete, that was one thing I didn't like. And now I'm like, what? What so a waste of a my thing. time. <laughs> like, uh, um, but it's, it's okay to be sad and feel things. Okay. And you're not always angry. You're missing something and things will always get better. I like, I like it. it. Very good. Yes. So my last question is, well, second to last question. <laughs> What's a book you've read recently that you actually like liked? I was actually reading a book about uh, financial stability for children and how to um, approach that. I grew up in a very well-off area, but money was kind of utilized um you you had it and then you didn't it could be taken mm -hmm. away and after my dad passed I learned so many things and taxes I just felt how am I so smart I don't know anything so that's actually been a, a different passion of mine is learning that so I've been learning how to incorporate that at a, at a young age for my children and my four-year-old has a credit card in her name but nice. <laughs> I haven't read any fun books I used to be Harry <laughs> Potter girl but I've only been reading like branding books like okay. I am in my grind era like I, right. I described the next probably two years in compilation of three in total being my grind years. Like I'm trying to get my doctorate, if you will, right. for my business. Yeah. So that's fantastic. Really, if I'm not learning anything from it, I'm not you reading don't it right now. It. Yeah. Understandable. 
Uh, I love that concept too. Sorry, just to yeah. chime in real quick. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of this guy. His name's Alex, Alex Hermosi, but that's kind of what he was talking about too. He was like, anything worth doing, you need to like just jump in and yeah. like that's what your life is for like two to three years. Just do it. You can be tired any day. Why not be tired of something that creates success for you? Right. Yeah. Like every, everything in life is hard. Going to the gym is hard. Sometimes getting out of bed is hard for me. Right. So I might as well like dedicate myself to something I'm proud of. Children changed a lot for me. My first wasn't planned, but now that I have something to push for and show for, it's been uh, super helpful. Nice. So we know your business, but where can people follow you guys, like your events and all the fun stuff you're putting on? Yeah, um, Instagram and Facebook are honestly your best bet. I still haven't finished the website, and by that, I haven't finished putting the money in my bank account to pay for the website. Um, <laughs> and it changes so much uh, because I am a, a one-woman team. Food trucks and events are canceling daily oh, yeah. and weekly, when, not on purpose. You know, like Things happen in mm-hmm. life, and I pride myself in being understanding, so I might add four events the week prior. So right now, it doesn't make sense to me, which the older community doesn't like, but we're super active on Facebook and Instagram. Instagram. You'll always know each week, but you might not be able to plan two weeks in an event or in advance unless it is an event. Um, And again, my phone number is the model um, for everything. You can text me. I don't care. I'll text you back (laughs) and call you back. (laughs) And spell out Freya for the people who aren't. Yeah, it is F-R-E-Y-A apostrophe S new word H-A-U-S. Cool. Perfect. Can you tell I voice to text a lot? Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm like, unfortunately, I know how to spell a phrase house because I'm that kid who like liked random mythology. It's great, right? Yeah. I'm trying to get my wife into it. It's it's a slow start. Freya drove a golden chariot with two blue cats. Like she, they put out a really beautiful article about us in Topsail Magazine. Mm. Super flattering. And I don't think I've ever been I have blushed like that. But they do a lot of talking about Freya and the honeymoon and all of that. That's how we have created Friday and Freya and Odin was her husband and he was like a warrior. So it kind of all ties into our our family and and all of that good stuff. But she was a baddie. They were going to take down some of the trees and um, I called Novant and I was like, look, I will change. I will lorax myself to a tree. Like (laughs) Freya's the goddess of war and love. Like, what do I love? The trees. We're we're going to go to war, but needless to say, we kept them. And so just my business model is, Freya fights for things she believes in, and that is something I hope to continue to do with with the bar and just Operation Pretty Things has been helpful there for domestic violence, and we've done a lot with foster families, but Mm -hmm. any time and place we can help, we we strive to do so. I love that. Thank you. You got any? I think that's all the questions I had for you today. Thank you so much for coming in. We greatly appreciate your time today and um, taking some time away from the bar. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. Yes. Have fun at the bar. (laughs) If you guys are here and you got free time afterwards, go check out Freya's house. For those who weren't here today and you caught us on YouTube or on social media, go check them out throughout the week. You will probably find me there at some point because it's a lot closer to my house than some other places. So I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.